Hi, my name is Jack Bailey, and welcome to the Blue Line Report. Unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts, we could not get the FanDuel session in time, but we will instead uh, be, I'll be sitting down with Owen O'Kane for our Hockey Talk segment. So stay tuned for that. But first, I talked to uh, Braden, uh, Brandon Mackey, sorry, a staff writer for SB Nation's Silver Sends and uh, the host of The Internal Budget. Hey. Hey, Jack. Thanks for having me. No problem. So uh, today we're just going to be talking about the new Sens logo, the the worst kept secret in the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> um, no captains were announced, or that's what uh, DJ Smith says, and uh, free agents draft. So yeah, let's let's start with um, the logo. What are your, what are your thoughts? Well, I love it. Uh, I think it's it's been a long time coming, as do many Sens fans. They think that uh, it's long overdue. There was some speculation a few years ago whether or not they were going to go with the O logo full time, but uh, this kind of reemergence of people wanting the 2D logo back came about in the last couple of years, and I've kind of been converted into that camp. I used to be a guy who liked the O logo more, but I love the 2D look. I think it's sleek. I think it looks, you know, stylish just for everyday wear. I love what they've done with the gold on the cape to kind of give it that little modern touch. I think it's great. I really do. Well, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Um, I think how they released it, I, I, I don't know, because it was leaked in an article. Uh, we we kind of found out about it like a few months ago. Uh, but I like it. I think it just exemplifies the new era of the Ottawa Senators in the sense of that old logo was the Eric Carlson um, Mark Stone era of the Ottawa Senators, where this era can be the new Brady Kachuk, Thomas Shabbat era of the Ottawa Senators. So in terms of that, I really like it. Uh, they said the jerseys are coming out on draft night, if I'm... Yep, yep. Home and away jerseys are coming on draft day. So that's, yeah, I think I think that could, you know, it'll, it'll be cool to see. I, I think, obviously, with, your, with the Ottawa Senators, you know, anything to draw attention to that is a bonus for that. Definitely. It's been it's been more than 10 years since they've had a good looking jersey. The, the last time they've had oh. a really, really nice jersey was or a full time jersey. Anyway, they've had some nice alternates, but it's been it hasn't been since 2007 uh, when they switched to this 3D logo that they've had a really nice jersey. So I'm looking forward to it. So you weren't a fan of the uh, the or I guess the current jerseys? You know, no, I was originally. Um, I, I liked them when I was younger. I was about eight years old when those jerseys first came out. So I did like them. But as the thing is, they haven't aged well, right? Like they don't really fit in with the rest of the league's uniforms. They don't look all that professional, I find, with the 3D logo. It's just it looks kind of, you know, cartoonish. Uh, so I, I'm glad they're switching back. I Like I said, this, that 2D look has always been a little more sleek, a little more stylish. So I think that's the one to go with for sure. That's a fair point. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see the O logo. I think the O logo is great on a third jersey. I think if you implement that on your starting jersey, it, it can get dull. I feel like it get it would get dull pretty yeah. quickly. You know, because yeah. you got you got teams that like there's very few teams uh, who can pull off the just the single letter one like. Hopefully Seattle can. We don't even know because we'll see the – I mean, I've seen the – we've seen the home jersey, but, you know, it's it's always different to see it, uh, just the, the jersey itself and then to see it on the ice. So we'll see if that looks a little wacky or it looks really good. But very few teams can pull off in, – in any sport can pull off the one-letter, like, logo – and I think when you've got teams like the San Jose Sharks or the Anaheim Ducks who have like these very like cartoony logo or very out there logos, I think, you know, not going completely like that, but just to meet in the center is nice. And I really like the logo. I mean, obviously they're not going too crazy with this one, reverting back to their old logo, but you know, I, I like it. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on when you say that the O is perfect for the heritage kind of alternate Jersey, especially when you're a team like Ottawa and you have to deal <laughs> with, uh, with all the, with all the cracks, like, Oh, is the O a zero for zero championships or, or what stuff like that? You know? So uh, I really like it. I think the O is going to be around long-term. Um, I, I know that they aren't going to have a third Jersey this year, 
but Haley Salvian, who actually had the originally original report from the athletic, she's a great writer. And she was, uh, she was saying when she saw the original uniform mock-up that it did include a red, um, alternate and whether they keep that with the 2d or they keep that with the O I think they'll keep it with the O. If you look through Senators jerseys in the past, they've always kind of gone with a secondary logo for that uh, third jersey. They haven't really stuck with the home logo. Um, if you look back to the O jerseys, if you look back to the infamous Sens jerseys that they had across the front or the SNES jerseys as they're referred to. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think they'll have a red alternate, and I think it'll be the O for sure, and that'll probably come about after next season. So... Uh, like you said, it was leaked. Um, so I currently live in Ottawa. Uh, there is a giant tiger right by my house. So I was, it was actually a week ago where I was in the giant tiger and they had merchandise in there with the t-shirts with the new logo. And some people were like, oh, but it's the old logo. No, it had the gold cresting and everything. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like Ottawa. <sighs> It's, Ottawa hasn't been able to do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I mean, in all fairness to them, in all fairness to them, I think they had a way that they wanted to go about it. I think they were really committed to unveiling everything at the draft and surprising everybody. But when COVID-19 kind of changed plans a little bit, uh, they weren't able to roll it out on time. So what I think is they already had the merchandise shipped out to retailers and whatnot. <laughs> And it was just too late for them to kind of pull everything back and hold off on actually. I think that they had a really good, solid plan of how they wanted to go about it. And it was just the unfortunate circumstances that we're in that kind of screwed it up. Yeah, definitely. But uh, moving on. So big topic for the Ottawa Senators right now. Or you, if you're a fan, you're definitely looking forward to the three picks that you have in this year's uh, NHL draft. How do you think Ottawa is going to use those three picks? Well, Pierre Dorian was on the radio today, and he actually said that they're, it's more likely than not that they're going to move some of their picks within the first three rounds. I have no doubt in my mind that they'll pick, that they'll pick with three and five. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Pierre, Pierre actually said today that um, he, he basically said it without saying it, but he said that they're going to take one of Quinton Byfield or Tim Stutzel with number three, whoever's available. Uh, as far as number five goes, there's a lot of wiggle room. I think they like Lucas Raymond from Ferlunda. I really like Lucas Raymond from Ferlunda. So I think that would be probably the best pick. I think in any other draft, that guy's a number three pick. Uh, it's just the fact that this draft is so insanely deep and especially top heavy. Uh, with number 28, I don't know if this is the generally held opinion or not, but I think they're going to trade that pick, uh, whether that's for a goaltender or whether that's for uh, a, you know a right-handed defenseman or, or another kind of placeholder center, I don't know. But I would be surprised personally if they pick with 28. But as far as three and five go, those picks aren't going anywhere. Uh, yeah, I, I quite agree. Um, I think obviously... You got to at, at three, you got to take either Byfield or Stetzel. It just all depends on who LA takes. But with the fifth pick, like you said, there's quite a bit of wiggle room. Um, Lucas Raymond, obviously, I think he's going to be a rock solid pick. Whoever gets him is going to get a bona fide, just absolute, like, suit. Like, he'll solid, be a first line winger. Right. Yeah. I, th I think he, he's like, he's a very, he's a sure pick. For sure. A yeah. lot of people have said, though, there might be the possibility of Ottawa taking the kid from their backyard in Marco Rossi with that fifth pick. Do you see that happening? Um, if you had asked me a few months ago, I probably would have. Uh, it, would, it was a little likely. The situation we're in now with Rossi being a center, Ottawa's going to get a center with that number three overall pick. They're going to get Quinton Byfield or they're going to get Tim Stutzel. So do they go with two centers when you already have Josh Norris and Logan Brown and Colin White in your system? I don't see it personally, but I, I, think, they're, I think they're more likely to go with a winger or even a defenseman. But this team has not been afraid to go off the board in terms of drafting before. They've surprised us in the last few years with the likes of Brady Kachuk and Shane Pinto and Lassie Thompson. So 
it wouldn't surprise me, but if I had to put my money on it, I don't think they take Rossi with five. If they maybe trade up earlier into the first round with that Islanders pick, I could see them maybe grabbing him there. But as far as three and five go, I'd be a little surprised. Uh, I, I totally agree uh, with you, like in the center aspect of it. But I see Rossi coming into this week and being altered into a winger for one reason and one reason only. He is, uh, sorry, I'm reading his height. He is 5'9". That's a very small size for a center who is usually a bigger dude. You got players such as, like, Austin Matthews, who are top players in this league, or, sorry, top centers in this league, who are 6'3". And, like, take uh, Quentin Byfield. He's 6'4". Stencil's on the shorter side of it, being 5'11", but it's still – still a decent size where I think Rossi would fit so much better as a winger because of his size, but he's also a speedy guy. He's a playmaker. Uh, you've be, from me being in Ottawa. I've gotten to see that, see that quite a bit. Uh, but I, I see Rossi as a winger because of his, his size. I think, I think that's it. So I could definitely see, I see your point of maybe Ottawa not taking the center, but, if there's a center that you have to take with that second pick, I see it being Rossi. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I mean, they've even talked about uh, converting Tim Stutzel back to the wing because I because he's played both. I believe he's a natural center, but he has played the wing. Uh, as far as Rossi goes, uh, yeah, he is definitely on the shorter side. One thing people don't talk about enough with regards to him, though, is just how strong he is on the puck. His lower body is so strong. It's much stronger than you would think of a guy his size. So could he play center at the NHL level? Yeah, I think he could. I think he's fast enough. I think he'll put on some muscle. He might even grow a couple inches, right? So, like, you know, um, some guys don't finish growing till their early 20s. So we'll see. Um, I think he's definitely talented enough, but he's a safe pick for whoever takes him. He's so talented. He's got such good offensive instincts. His vision is just incredible. So I, I could see him definitely being taken in that fifth pick. Uh, again, whether or not that'll happen is just my personal opinion. He's not, he's not a name I've heard thrown around in that spot a lot. Um, he was in the beginning, but not so much anymore, but, but yeah, I think you're definitely onto something. I think, I think moving him to the wing is definitely a possibility. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you said that they, you think they might want to trade that 28th pick. And a lot of people have had uh, a lot of trades coming to the Ottawa Senators. They think they might be a trading team this offseason. A lot of that is goaltending with the, you know, you never know with Craig Anderson and Nielsen. Like, you want that rock solid goalie. I don't know if I want, if you, if you want to be, and I know Ottawa won't necessarily be trying to contend this year but if you want to be a a fighting team in this nhl you can't have a and all respect to nielsen and anderson but you just can't have those guys as your starter like your rock starter uh so a lot of people think that i've heard a lot of rumors about uh, matt murray obviously from pittsburgh with their situation with yari and obviously matt murray uh i've also heard darcy kemper what goal do you think would be the perfect fit for this Ottawa Senators team? Well, at this point, I would be surprised if Ottawa didn't bring in a goalie um, just because they confirmed today that they're not going to be offering Craig Anderson a contract extension. So he's officially done in Ottawa by all indications. Uh, as far as health goes for Anders Nilsson, that's still a huge question mark for the team. They don't know if he's going to be ready to go. He's still dealing with lingering concussion symptoms from the injury that he suffered in December. Pierre said today that he thinks that Nilsson is going to be ready for the start of the regular season, but they're not sure. Uh, as, in, as far as a better fit goes, it's tough because a lot of it is going to depend on price tag. Uh, for me personally, between the two, it's Murray and Kemper, who I think are the most likely to be traded for by Ottawa. Uh, I would lean towards Murray just because of the experience factor. He's a guy who's won two Stanley Cups. He's an RFA, so you have a little bit of contract control. And he's 26, whereas Kemper's, I think, around 30. So I, so for me, for an Ottawa team that's still in the middle of a rebuild, uh, that's probably your safest bet, um, at least for the next couple of years. Because even if you, know, you can sign him for a couple of years, you're not short on cap room. So if you 
if you need to move the contract, you can, or you can just cut bait. So I, I would lean towards Murray, but again, it's going to depend on cost. There's been some speculation that Murray is going to cost at least a first round pick. I don't know if that's something Ottawa's willing to part with for a, what could very well be a short term goaltender. It's not something I would part with if I was Pierre Dorian, but at the end of the day, you need a guy that can play. Um, you don't want to throw Miss Hogberg into these games if you avoid it. Um, they they said today that they're that they're really cautioning their prospects, especially goaltenders. So Joey Decord had a great year in Belleville last year, but I doubt they want to run with a Hogberg Decord uh, tandem in Ottawa. Uh, so I really do think they'll bring in a goalie. I would lean towards Murray just from a talent perspective, but Kemper might be more realistic from a price tag perspective. Uh, could you see Ottawa going out and getting a? Not necessarily veteran, but like a more experienced, uh, like you know, a few years left on his like reign in the NHL. Uh, just because if you do, if Ottawa, if Pierre Dorian goes and gets a goalie, let's say for a two-year like little rental time, then you have goalie because Ottawa has a very depth or deep goalie depth chart in the sense of Joey Decord, Hogberg, Gustafson. So. Uh, do you do you think they could go out and get maybe a, like a two year rental and then bring those three guys up and just see whoever fits the most? Yeah, definitely. I, I think in terms of Hogberg specifically, he showed that he's ready to be an NHL goaltender for at least yeah. you know in a backup role this year. Uh, as far as the other guys go, you, you're looking at a prospect pool that is about four or five guys deep that I think the Senators could end up that I think the Senators believe could end up being their future in net. Uh, so will they pursue a two-year maybe uh, kind of stopgap goalie? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. It's something they've done before. Um, I think back in the day, they even brought in Alex Ald for a little bit. I, I don't know. That might be a little before your time. But uh, they've, they've done it before, and they've done it before at other positions. They brought in guys like Hainsey and Ennis this year to just kind of fill a gap. Nemesnikov they traded for early in the season. So I could definitely see that happening. Uh, with goalies, I'm sure they would probably like a little more stability. A sure thing is always better than, you know, than, than a maybe uh, when you're talking about prospects. But it, it wouldn't shock me, no. I, I think it's very it's a, there's, there's a very reasonable chance that that could happen. Uh, so yesterday or a few days ago, uh, DJ Smith announced that there he doesn't think that there will be captain announced for the Senators. Why do you think that? Well, it's tough. Um, if you had like I said, if you had asked me a, uh, like a month ago, I would have bet a good amount of money that Thomas Shabbat was going to be named captain before the start of this coming season. Uh, the fact that they're waiting uh, indicates to me one of two th- or one of two things. One. It could just be that they want to give Shabbat an extra year. They don't expect to be very good this year, and they don't want to have to put that extra pressure on him when the team is losing a lot of games this year. Or two, that they want it to be Brady Kachuk, but they don't want to give Brady the C without having him signed long term. By all indications, uh, it's not going to be as easy to get Kachuk signed long term than it is Shabbat. I do. I don't anticipate Brady being signed before the end of next season, and I think that's kind of the generally held belief by a lot of people. I think he. I think that one might come down to the wire a little bit, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, they surprised everybody with Shabbat. Everybody thought Shabbat wasn't going to get done as early as he did too, right? So anything can happen. But uh, and again, I keep throwing it back to Pierre Dorian's press conference and media availability availability today, but he was talking about just how how much the landscape of the NHL has changed financially because of COVID-19. Um, so they have to be kind of cautious with how they play things right now. I think they're probably waiting until they get a better idea of what the future of the league looks like before they make a decision like that. I know they want Brady long-term, but how much money they're going to be willing to give him, whether or not they go to arbitration or things like that. I think that is going to be really interesting going forward. Do I think Brady Kachuk is going to get signed next summer with Ottawa? Yeah, I do. But I think it will probably be something closer to Matthew Con- Matthew Kachuk's contract in, in Calgary, where it's a little more beneficial to the player than it is for the team, uh, where the player kind of bets on himself. 
So as far as the captaincy goes, I think you can't go wrong with either of those guys. Um, and I would anticipate that this time next year, one of those guys is going to be the captain of the Ottawa Senators. It's just going to depend on how things go this season and over the course of next spring. Uh, yeah. Um, hello. Yeah, you got me. Oh yeah. Okay, I got you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Uh, Nathan. Sorry about that. Uh, did I like connect? Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay, awesome. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, we just had some technical difficulties, but let's get back to the show. Uh, so, do you think with the whole COVID-19 thing and the cap probably not going up for the next few years, do you think that's going to slow down the rebuild? I don't think it's going to slow down the rebuild. I think at this point, so much of the work has already been done. Um, they have have their two top picks in this year's draft, which has been the plan for some time now. This has been the draft that they've targeted ever since they've kind of initiated this whole rebuild. The foundation of prospects is already in place. Guys like Batherson, Norris, Brandstrom, Will Lannon, they have their pieces in place. Uh, they're getting the high-end skill in the draft this year. I think, in if anything, it could help the Senators financially. Um, we know they're a team that is not the richest in the NHL, and we know that there are going to be teams that are going to be really hurt by the flat salary cap and need to shed some some money. So what Ottawa should be doing, in, in my opinion, is weaponizing their cap space in the sense that they can take on some other teams' bad contracts in exchange for players or picks. Maybe they even can even get a really good player that a team just has no choice to move. Like the Vancouver Canucks were talking about having to move Brock Besser. Uh, that that was a discussion that was had in the summer. And wh whether or not that'll happen remains to be seen. But those are the kind of deals that Ottawa should be looking at. So I, I don't think it'll hurt them. Um, it may kind of change how they do contract negotiations and things like that for at least the time being. But I think if anything, it could actually really help them long term. And my last question for you is, now that Craig Anderson and Mark Borgeski are gone, is it a good thing or a bad thing that there is only one player remaining from that uh, Eastern Conference mm -hmm. Finals team? <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, I guess it's kind of a circle of life thing, right? Um, eventually, th that's just what happens. I remember, I'm I'm old enough now to remember when the last player from the 2007 Stanley cup final team was gone. So it's tough. I mean, in terms of Craig Anderson, you're talking about a guy who's 39 years old um, and is in the twilight of his career. He's had somewhat of a regression over the past few years, but what he's meant to this franchise and to the fans has been immense. Um, you can't measure that kind of impact. He's the greatest goaltender the team's ever had. So it's sad, but it's, but it's the right move for both parties in the long run. As far as Mark Borowiecki goes, uh, he's a guy I thought Ottawa should have brought back. Uh, if nothing else, then for you know a leadership and character standpoint, if you're hesitant to make one of Shabbat or Brady captain, you can make Borrow the captain for a year or two. Um, he'll field those tough questions for the media. He's active in the community. He does so much good work um, for the Capital City Condors. He's an activist for Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQ community. Uh, and I, I, I've had the chance to speak with uh, with Mark on more than one occasion. And I can tell you, if you have any doubts, he's a phenomenal human being. Like He's a super classy, down-to-earth guy. And I think that's a guy you can use in the locker room and in the community, especially one that the fan base loves so much. And one that the fan base did a total 180 on. Right, like he was a reviled player a few years ago. He was not loved among the fan base, and now they can't get enough of him, and they're all sorry to see him go. Uh, so that's a guy I would have kept around. But to answer your question, I, I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's just it's just the nature of the business, right? It, it feels like forever ago, but it was only three years. And look how much has changed for the Ottawa Senators in those three years. Guys like Mark Stone, Eric Carlson, Kyle Turris, guys that aren't on the team anymore. 
right? And the whole landscape and structure of the organization has changed. So change is inevitable. Uh, that 2017 team will always be looked on fondly, but I'm very excited to see what the future holds for this young group of Ottawa Senators and for the organization as a whole. That, that was a great, that's a great send off. That's perfect. So thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. Uh, so our, next segment, our next segment is Owen O'Kane. We'll be right back in a moment.